it's Alison Tandry with my second installment of my lecture series on Trom Theory. If you haven't listened to the first one, or you are tuning in to our YouTube channel for the first time, have no worries. No previous study or familiarity with the resolution of the mind, also known as Trom, is required to follow any of this. Though Trom, strictly speaking, is a sort of psychotherapy and includes techniques to relieve past traumas and resolve inner conflicts, you don't have to have a psychiatric condition to benefit from it. Nearly everyone has memories they'd like to forget, problems they'd like to resolve, and other such mental discomforts. Where the psychologist, psychiatrist or minister aims at and settles for conditions that pass for normal in our society, Trom aims to take you to a level of mental well-being and awareness higher than normal human standards. In other words, Traumers are not necessarily crazy people trying to make themselves well, but mostly normal people who wish to experience the exceptional. Nearly anyone who has had a high school education and is of at least average intelligence can learn Traum. All they need is the courage to confront their mind, willingness to study, and can make a time commitment. We provide you with instructional videos, audio lectures, and written materials. We even answer questions at tromguides at gmail.com. Our services are 100% free. Period. So, how does this all work? Today I'll share with you a basic understanding of how false identifications work to disrupt your rational thought processes and hinder your happiness and well-being. Then I'll tell you how trom exercises help resolve such, then suggest a course of study and practice. A false identification is identifying one thing as another when in fact it is not. It is assigning equality to two things that aren't actually equal to each other. To help explain this, let's start with the man who is afraid of dogs. At the age of six, he was attacked by a large black dog and bitten several times sending him to the hospital. Later on in his twenties, he visits a friend's house, who has a medium-sized black dog, but it reminds him of the dog that bit him when he was six. Now, two things could happen here, depending on how good of a shape this man is in mentally and emotionally. He could walk into his friend's home, see the dog, and say to his friend, sorry, I'm a bit afraid of dogs. I was bitten really badly when I was a kid. His friend might ask him what kind of dog it was, and maybe a little bit about the circumstances regarding the attack. So he obliges his friend, tells him it was a big black Labrador that bit him several times, and the dog's name was Sparky. His friend points to the dog and says, well, this dog is named Rusty. He's a mixed breed. I don't think he has any Labrador in him. The man sees the dog is friendly, wagging his tail, unlike the dog that bit him, and reluctantly bends down to pet the dog a few times. He may feel uncomfortable at first, but after a while, he sees his friend's dog is not a threat to him, and he goes into the next room with his friend and the dog, and all three of them sit on the couch with each other. They start to watch the game, have a few drinks, and all is well. Or, things could go like this. He arrives at his friend's house. He sees the dog, gets a shiver down his spine, and says to his friend, Hey, I just bought a 70-inch television last week. Let's go watch the game over at my place instead, not even realizing it's the presence of a dog that's making him want to leave. In the first example, the man got over his fear by examining what made his friend's dog similar to the one that bit him, but he also noted how this dog is different too. It's a smaller dog. Different breed. Different name. He's wagging his tail. In the second example, he wasn't aware of what was making him want to leave his friend's house. He may have some conscious or subconscious belief that all dogs are dangerous. The problem goes unnoticed and unhandled, and will surely trouble him again later on in life. You don't have to have a master's degree in psychology to understand what happened here. A man can compare his past to the present and relieve himself of the ill effects of it, or he can be stuck with his mental burdens, whether he is aware of such burdens or not. Now we see how in real life in the first example the man handled his upset over the dog and could do so because he was aware of what was upsetting him. But how do we handle someone like in the second example, someone who may not be aware of what's troubling him? How could you, yourself, 
Become aware of what's actually troubling you by systematically finding out what it is and discharging your upset over it. Dennis Stevens came up with a technique called time breaking. That means you view the past and the present at the same time. You learn how to do this on trom levels 2 and 3. First, you take an object from the past and compare it to an object in the present. You note the differences between the past object and the present object and you keep doing this until you are comfortable doing so. You can start doing this with any object from any event. It doesn't have to be a traumatic one like being bitten by a dog. You do this for the purpose of training your mind to sort out the difference between the present and the past, so you are no longer equating the two with each other. Let's relate some of this to our example with the man who is afraid of dogs. During the course of level 2 of Trom, in his comparing objects from the past to the present, even before he's brave enough to do this with the dog that bit him, he is still dismantling the mechanism in his mind that identifies the present as his past, and his fear of dogs may start to go away even though he hasn't yet directly confronted that dog during his exercises. And when he's ready, and he does the exercise with the dog that bit him, he will experience great relief and may have a few realizations about himself and how he thinks and behaves. Your mind has a false identification between a past object or person and one in the present. This could be a man identifying a dog in the present as a dog from the past. A man could equate his wife with his mother, or a woman equating her husband with her father. Many of the upsets to be found in the mind are simply a case of mistaken identity, and the less aware the person is of this, the worse it gets. You get rid of that false identification by noting differences and similarities between the two, and the false identification, and the upset that goes along with it dissipates considerably. And there's even more this man could do. On Trom level 3 one compares full events to their current environment by experiencing that event and their surroundings at the same time. By now, the ability to recognize differences and similarities between the past and the present is automatic, having practiced that on level 2. This results in a person who can live in the moment, unhindered by the prejudices the past has enforced upon them. Before I go, I want to advise you to learn the proper technique for doing this. Don't just go trying trom exercises based on this short presentation. It's not going to work and may end up being dangerous to your mental well-being. Trom exercises are safe and effective, but they must be done per their precise instructions. If you want to get started right away, please watch our presentation on how to do level 1 of trom. If you want to ground yourself further in trom theory before starting, I recommend downloading the book Trom 2023 from this video's description, or watching the playlist entitled Start Here. Once again, a false identification is simply mistaking one person, object or event for another, or holding two things as being equally important to each other that are not. That first explanation of a false identification is what I covered in today's lecture. In my next lecture, I'll not only cover how the second one comes about, but also tell you how such is resolved in levels 4 and 5 of Trom. I'm Alison Tandry. This is DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.